Parents, welcome to another episode of The Journey, a podcast intended to educate, equip, and entertain you as we talk about important issues facing our families. PCA is a Christ-centered, biblically-based, and family-focused community of committed believers doing life together. We hope the information you hear on this podcast informs and inspires you to be a better parent. Welcome to The Journey. All right, parents, welcome back to The Journey. This is Dan Panetti, and I've got a couple um, fun guests. We're going to have a great time. We're going to talk about, um, this is going to be released over Thanksgiving, so we're going to talk about something about Thanksgiving-esque, right? Thanksgiving, thankfulness, gratitude, developing an attitude of gratitude. Um, And so I brought along um, some good friends. Um, My best friend I brought, um, Trisha Panetti, so my wife, um, sixth grade science teacher. Um, But Sherry and Emery, I want you guys to introduce yourselves a little bit, kind of give us a little bit of background background um, family, how many kids you have here, how long you've been at PCA. So let's see, let's go ladies first. I'm Sherry Smith. We have six kids at PCA. My oldest is a junior. I have a freshman, eighth grade, fifth grade, second grade, and pre-K five. Oh, you are so, amazing. So what, what's the gap age-wise from oldest to youngest? 16 to five. 16 to five. Wow. 11 mm-hmm. years. Yes. That's that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. It's, oh. it's fun. <laughs> she makes it look easy. Uh, it's not. <laughs> no, no. But that, that, that's awesome. And you guys have been here at PCA for how long? Well, my oldest started in kindergarten here. Okay. And then we moved to Denver for my husband's business. Okay. And then we got back as fast as we could. There you go. Yeah. Very good. And where are you from originally? South Carolina. Oh, both you and Ryan yeah. are from South Carolina. Yeah. That's right. And I think you went to... The university, right? Yes, of South of Carolina. South Carolina. Yes. And he went to Clemson. The other school. Yeah, yeah, the other school there in South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, but we don't even talk about that. No, no goodies. <laughs> Very good. Emery, yes, what about sir. you? So uh, my wife Amy and I have four kiddos here, uh, 10th grade son, uh, 7th grade son, and twin girls, uh, special special presents, uh, twins that are in fourth, <laughs> fourth grade. And but both boys ahead and Mrs. Panetti, and it's, it's been a great Great adventure. Favorite teacher. Yes, yeah, their absolute, fav- right. their absolute just, favorite teacher. I should say it. That's Get it right. out. Yes. She was one of my favorite teachers because I knew she'd keep them in line. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been here for, oh gosh, if you count CLC and all that, it's been it's been probably 12 years, okay. I would say. Yeah. So, yeah. And you were just talking about how you're from the Northeast. Is yes, that, sir. Would we consider yep. Pennsylvania the Northeast? Northeast. Okay. Amy and I both grew up in Pennsylvania and due to jobs brought us to, to Dallas and we've been here. 20 years, almost yeah. 20, over 20 years now. Now, are you a Penn State fan? Uh, Penn State alum. Oh. Amy and I both. So it was a rough weekend last, last week. So, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but no, we love PCA. It's a great, great school. And as you and I were talking about before we came online, I think our stories are similar in the sense that I really had no interest in our kids coming Zero. Here. Zero interest. Zero interest Zero. at all. Um, I know. But it worked it's out. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, God has a plan that, that you know, that okay. we eventually okay. will submit I, to. I think the best way to say it, God has a sense of humor. Yes. Right? <laughs> That he works out through a plan. Yes. That he doesn't necessarily tell you what he's doing. Because if he did, we'd run the other way. Right. But he kind of drug your family here. He did. Right? In a similar way that he drug our family here. Because we were public school people all the way. Yeah. Trisha was a public school teacher. And, right, they asked me to be on the board when they started PCA. And I was like, yeah, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but you came to a preview. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Amy, my wife, had come so many times they thought she worked here. Uh, so she was all in. It was just me that, was, that couldn't be drug in. Come on, Amy. Come on. Yeah. But, but uh, I said earlier, you and, and Dr. Taylor and a few others really, really got us over the hump, mm. and we are so grateful mm. for it. So. so glad to have you. Thank you. Now, where we want to start, then, is actually thinking about gratitude, right? And you did a little bit of research I did. on kind of the concept of gratitude. And yes, I, want sir. You, I want you to share that because it's really important for us to kind of lay this groundwork as we talk about this. Because we want to be... Not just thinking about this right in theory, but we want to be practical. And so there's some good information you want to share. Hip yes, sir. That. I, I'm, I'm an engineer by background, so I have to do a little bit of research. It's go. just how we are. So I got this from the Mayo Clinic, and this is their definition of gratitude, or the benefits of gratitude. They said that expressing gratitude is associated with a host of mental and physical benefits. Studies have shown that feeling thankful can improve sleep, mood, and immunity in today's world. 
Uh, gratitude can decrease depression, anxiety, difficulties with chronic pain, and risk of disease. If a pill could do this, everybody would take it. I love wow. it. And furthermore, just real quick, I thought it was an interesting side note. They said that the brain cannot have both gratitude and anxiety at the same time. It's one or the other. There you go. So either you have the, the, the positive benefits and feelings mm -hmm. of gratitude or you have the negative benefits of anxiety. You can't do both. Yeah. So, so, so when we talk about developing this attitude of gratitude, with our students, with our family. We're not just talking about this like in theory, like, oh, that would be a great idea. I wish, my, I wish our kids, you know, were more thankful. The reality is, is that anxiety, right, is, is ravishing our young people. Yeah. That's right. And the concept is, is when we develop an attitude of gratitude, right, we're really pushing back that anxiety so that they're able to deal with life in a better way, right? It changes your perspective on the way that you deal with life. Mm -hmm. right? So super, super important. Sherry, when we think about just developing an attitude of gratitude, right, what comes to mind for you as a mom? Modeling it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Making sure I have an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> yeah. And that I'm, that I'm saying it out loud. Okay. So that they can hear it. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, telling Ryan, thank you for working so hard for our family today. Or just, you know, just saying, praying out loud, Lord, thank you so much for, for this reliable car. Mm. Thank you for our school. You know, just where they can hear what I'm thinking in my heart. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we, we talked about how... Like, we're not talking about putting kind of rose-colored glasses on mm -hmm. and just saying we're thankful for everything, mm -hmm. even though sometimes life can be hard and difficult. Mm -hmm. But appreciating that even through the difficulty, right, God's in control, um, you know, that we are very fortunate to be where we are so that, um, you know, Trisha and I just had a hot water heater go out. And, and it was, you know, it was, it was frustrating. It was, you know, oh, my goodness, a hot water <laughs> heater goes out. And then we're kind of laughing because it's like we have two hot water heaters in our house. Like 90% of the rest of the world, one, doesn't have a hot water to heater. And two, it's like when one goes out, we just went and took showers in the other you know, bathroom that had hot water still. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I can, be, I can be thankful even for something that's a negative because it helps me appreciate the, oh, my goodness. Like, I do not appreciate things on a constant basis, right, that we just take for granted. Yep. And that, that really kind of helped put that perspective in mm -hmm. there. So modeling it for your kids is really mm -hmm. an important aspect, right, is you know, do you remember that you're thankful for, right, how God has blessed you, right? And maybe not, you know, necessarily the material blessings, but just the blessings of, of his presence and who he is, right? Mm -hmm. Salvation. Yeah. Right? Start there. Great place. Trisha, what happens when you think about great? Well, I want to jump off of what Sherry said, and I think it is, it starts with me. And we set the tone for the house. If mama's happy, everyone's happy. Uh, I'm sure that doesn't happen with y'all, but it does at the Panetti house. And um, what I've learned is how I see and view the world is that model to our kids. And so I think it's the idea of verbalizing. That was one thing when the kids were younger. I think a lot of times as moms we're just going through the motion and we have check marks i'm doing this and this and thinking oh that's so awesome that they did that but learning to verbalize it mm -hmm. to the kids so when you're at the checkout line now i do know people don't use checkout they don't go to the grocery store anymore Tr trisha's just started this yes because all these young moms are like oh no we don't take our kids to the grocery yet, store so, you're ahead of me. so i'm just a yeah. little bit there but i've learned that kids i mean that was the hardest thing with our kids but being able to be aware that before we went in making them aware of their surroundings. I think gratitude is giving them an awareness of their surroundings, what is around them, what is being able to see people, being able to see the person checking us out, being able to be gracious to the person who's bringing us water. Maybe it's not as fast as we wanted it, but that waitress is putting a lot of time and energy and being able to show that, model that, and speak that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a big key is giving them the awareness of people and then making them aware of the things of God and just the goodness of God. And so, yeah. yeah. What about at your home? Yeah. So I've got a couple of things that everything I said was great. One of the things, a couple of rules in our house, every prayer we start with, thank you mm -hmm. with Thanksgiving, everyone, regardless of what we're praying for, whether it's our meal or praying for grandma that's sick or whatever the case may be, we start with thank you. Mm -hmm. um, another big one that Amy uses with the kids is to your point about the grocery store, just because we can, doesn't mean we should. Mm -hmm. When you use that's about buying something, right? Yep. They want this yep. stuffed animal or that, you know, that's whatever. Yeah. Just because we can do it doesn't mean we should. Um, and then lastly, it's just um, 
you know, we just we try to we try to give back as much as we can with the kids. You know, we take them locally, Grace Bridge. There's so many great opportunities around here. Operation Christmas Child coming with shoeboxes to to serve. Just just give back. Because honestly, one of my biggest pet peeves, my kids get tired of hearing me say this, and all their friends, is that you live in a bubble here in West Plano. Yeah. You're very right. very yes. fortunate. You know, the school you go to, the church you go to, the house you live in, like you said, two water heaters. Most, most of the rest of the world does not live that way. Right. And so we really spend a lot of time, when we can, giving back and, and going to see some of these other, you know, areas that aren't as fortunate as we are. Okay, so, so you mentioned it, right? Yep. We live in, right, West Plain. We live in one of the most affluent places in the world. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so why is it so difficult for our kids and us as parents to really exhibit gratitude and to have that heartfelt gratitude when, right, if you just look around us, right, we're in a tremendously blessed, affluent, prosperous place where it would seem like to the rest of the world, yeah, they would be the most thankful people in the world, right? right. But if you look around, right, we, we have a, a lot of anxiety yeah. in this area. We have a lot of ungratefulness. Um, we have a lot of comparison, right? Uh, what, what don't I have as opposed to looking at what I do have, right? Why do you think that's so difficult to, to grasp here in Plano? I'll, I'll go first. I think it's one, it's human nature, okay. right? Like you said, what, you know, my buddy's got a nicer car than I have. Right. Why can't I have a nicer car? But I think also in, in our kids' defense, they were, they were born into this yeah, in a lot right. of cases. They don't, they don't know any different. Yeah. You know, some of us were born maybe middle, middle class, lower middle class. And so we can appreciate what we have now, you know, as a, compared to what, what they, what they have. So I think a lot of it's just, they were born that way. And so, yeah, we, we really spent a lot of time trying to get them to see the other, the other side of it. Yeah. So, yeah. So important. So yeah. important. Sherry, you were talking about how, um, I know, I know we talk about Thanksgiving the week, um, and trying to instill kind of that attitude of gratitude during this week, but there isn't anything that you do necessarily as a big event during Thanksgiving, right? But it's just kind of like a, a daily practice that you're trying to instill in your kids to mm-hmm. help them be thankful. So, like, yes. what little things do you guys do as a family? Well, even at Thanksgiving, cause we don't have family in the area. Okay. So each of my kids is helping me prepare the meal. Okay. They're helping Ryan take the trash out and clean. So I think just serving mm-hmm. makes them more appreciative of what mom and dad are doing yeah. for the family. Yeah having a part in it and um, hopefully makes them not complain about the meal <laughs> as much. But it's hard to complain about a meal that you actually help prepare, it, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and it also shows them when they make something and they hear their sibling possibly complain about it. Oh. It, it makes it them, it does, yeah. and it awesome. makes them yeah. grateful for what mom's doing the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, so important, so important. Trisha, what about... Um, for your kids, <laughs> what are things that, that you've seen that we've done with our kids that you felt like, like, hey, that really helped our kids grasp this concept of being thankful? Well, going back, we don't do a lot of traditions but one of the, on Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. but one of them is going to the, we would go downtown to a homeless shelter. And when the kids were young, and it was awesome because the kids got to go with us. So the idea of being able to have them alongside of us, being able to give dignity to people who've just had a really hard time. Mm -hmm. And so we would serve food. We would go get coffee. The kids would go get coffee. They would be with an adult. But we would work in getting them clothes, and we'd get so excited to give someone, you know, an item of clothing, and they're so gracious. I mean, one thing we got to do, I got to wash someone's hair. And and I'll just say it was so humbling to me to sit there. Yes, to sit there and know that she hasn't bathed for a long time. And and just to be able to serve her like that, that we do nails and all, all sorts of things. But I think the most important thing is they got to look face to face, eye to eye, and think, you know what, it doesn't necessarily mean they've had bad life choices. So I think just giving dignity to other people, giving those opportunities, to, you know, to bring people into our home, people that are struggling, being able to see the awareness. But I really do think it's the idea of giving our kids those opportunities um, of speaking life and showing them how to speak life. I mean, we do just little things around the year. I think it's a year. Mm-hmm. It's a day to 
day. And that training is for Tricia. I mean, I'm a 52-year-old woman who struggles looking at the stuff of this world and thinking, I wish I. And so it becomes a comparison game. Man, that just takes you to the anxiety realm. It takes you to ungrat- you know, not having gratitude. So I think it's the practice of doing it. We started doing it uh, where we, we have family meals every Sunday. My mom and dad started that, and they cook. They've done it for 20 two-ish years 23 years maybe and so anyway but they would serve our family make the entire meal and then we'd come and eat and then we started doing birthday blessings so you would go around and you'd be able to share what you loved about that person that to me is showing thanksgiving Mm -hmm. that is teaching our kids how to value people now at the beginning i mean the kids little things they were were little kids (laughs) yeah they're okay i mean campbell believe me you're you're tall you're smart um you're handsome i mean so things but whenever the parents begin to model it it became a very deep thing that that person felt so much value and i think that's what our job in privilege that we get to do is give value to the people around us no matter what they look like you know if they're different than us so so emory one of the things paul writes about in first thessalonians is he says rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances Mm -hmm. what would you say to the family that's struggling then right because we talk about how um, when everything's going well, we still have to, you know, learn this kind of concept of gratitude and a thankfulness. Um, but, I mean, we're so blessed and things are going well. Mm-hmm. I know there's people out there who are struggling, though. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, okay, yeah, if everything were going great, I'd love to be thankful. But things are tough right now, right? I, I just got a bad, you know, report from a doctor or, you know, something happened over here, right? How do you have gratitude in the midst of difficulty? Yeah, that's um, one of the things you asked us to ponder about was was our family. When is it hard to, to be grateful? And mm-hmm. it, 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 the first thing that came to mind was, was those tough times, right? It's mm-hmm. really hard to be grateful when you know, your team loses the championship yeah. game or, you know, get a bad grade that's from right. your, your seventh grade teacher, sixth grade teacher. Surely um, not sixth grade teacher. <laughs> uh, or, you know, you lose your job or, sure. you know, whatever. And really what, what brought it back to me was um, Amy's dad, so my father-in-law, passed away about 10 years ago from pancreatic cancer. But when he was diagnosed with it, I mean, it was like our world was, was caving in, you know. But I can tell you that f- four-year struggle, five-year struggle he had, which, by the way, was about four years longer than they gave him, um, we really grew together as a family. Um, and really out of that came a lot, of, a lot of gratitude, a lot of gratefulness to God. And it's like, look, we don't know your plan. It doesn't make sense to us why he's sick and we know he's going to pass on. But it's your plan. It's in your hands. And we're grateful for it. And honestly, that really brought us together as a family. So yeah. that was a really bad situation on the surface that looking back really, really brought us together. Yeah. And I hate that he's not with us now, but we all know he's, he's looking down from above, you know, on all of his grandkids. And so. Can I pick you back on what he's saying? Yeah. I'm, no, I'm going out of order, but <laughs> I know you're used to that. Um, but I think that's the same thing with my dad. My dad was sick for 13 years, and we canceled lots of hol- um birthday parties we would have them down at cancer center there in baylor cancer center and anyway things changed but i will tell you when the pain hurt i think those were the moments that god was the biggest to me Mm -hmm. and it was because when you're going through a trial and a test you know i love it that the the teacher never talks during a test and so and if so it's always a whisper and so i think it's focusing on what was it who is god in looking for evidence of him and so when things were so bad we started a post-it wall at baylor hospital of all the good things that were good i mean it might be his fingernails grew today a little bit longer i mean but looking for the good and i think as parents if we can model that but we would always be driving down to the hospital and so i I think the car is a great time of capture Mm -hmm. where you get a a, a captive audience and that became it's great training center anytime before we would go to church we always pray and you know what are we praying for different things like that but it also became a time of worship and so anyway it became that time where God spoke to us and some of the kids favorite songs are these old Preston Wood songs that they used to hear my dad play in his hospital room in his car and so 
it was... He would play them really loud. Really loud. And they'd go through the tunnels yeah. down really in Addison, loud. and they'd worship, and they're, you know... Yeah. But that's some of the greatest memories, is they would go sing these songs to him in um, the, in the, you know, in his uh, room. And their hands are raised because they're worshiping a God. They're looking for the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what the hard times produce, learning to be able to see the character of God and focusing on that. I like it. Mm -hmm. Sherry, when you think about just from a biblical perspective, biblical narrative, is there anything like that comes to mind, right, from your perspective as like a story where you see thankfulness and gratitude in the word? Well, from our biggest model, Jesus, he always, he thanked God for food several times and um, thanked him for listening to him, for hearing him. And uh, so I guess a small, you know, acting like Jesus and doing it out loud where our kids can see us until they're old enough to take us out of the picture and just follow Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Such an important reminder. I, I love watching The Chosen. I don't know if you guys are huge. So oh, oh, like fantastic. Yes. fantastic. Fantastic. I, mean, I, I think they do such a great job. One, I, I'm glad they gave Jesus an incredible sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just the, the appreciation when you see Jesus, and, and like you're saying, when you see him on the pages of Scripture, how appreciative he is and how thankful he is, not just to his father, his heavenly father, right, but to the people around him who are ministering to him, who are uh, providing for him. And you're thinking, this is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, right? Like he is, he is over all, but then he came, right, in the position of a servant. And so it's, it's a very interesting thing to think about that idea that even though, you know, for a lot of our families, they're in very, you know, um, prosperous positions, but when you have the attitude of a servant, right, then you take those things that God has given you, and with that attitude of gratitude, right, you're able to serve other people, and you're able to minister to other people. You don't use what God has given you just for yourself, but as Trisha said, you have an awareness of the situation around you, and you're able to bless other people. And that's why I think it's important to look for opportunities, and you mentioned before, you know, Grace Bridge, right? Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes we need to have a physical reminder of the spiritual truth that we're trying to instill in our kids and in our own lives, and we need to go and place ourselves in a situation where we're, hey, we're going to go serve today. We're going to go do something for the benefit of other people, even though it costs us. And you're like, why would you ever want to do that? And it's like, because it reminds us of what Jesus did, right? Super, super important reminder of how Jesus took that attitude, right, of a servant, right, in humility, and he went and he served us, right? Literally to the point where he hung himself on a cross (laughs) in service for us. And so I think when we talk about, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, a week that we, you know, a lot of people, it's like you take a vacation, you you know, you get to kind of, you know, chill out for a week and you don't have to do a whole lot of things. I'm just like, don't miss opportunities, though, during this week to look for people to serve, to minister to, um, and model this for your kids. Well, and to find those people, to find people that are alone, that don't have family in town, that are widows. I mean, being able to invite them into your home and to bring them into their home and to give them value as well. I love that Operation Christmas Child is Mm -hmm. due this week, right before Thanksgiving, just Mm -hmm. to remind the children how much they have and how they can give back. And um, I love Minnie Mester. Yes. Just get the kids out of, you know, get them out of it, Plano and about that, let though. them see right. the rest of the world yeah. Yeah. and how they live. Put, Just your, put doing, your feet on yes. somebody else's soil, right? Walk the walk, see the people, mm-hmm. watch them live life and go, wow, like you see one, you see when God does work, right? No matter where he is and your heart connects with Christians in other places, it doesn't matter, right? If they're in a first world country, third world country, right? If they're rich or if they're poor, When they've got Jesus, they've got enough. Mm -hmm. And you realize that's so important. And then when you go back to Plano and you go, is Jesus enough for me here? Right? And you realize, yeah, I don't need all this stuff. And I think that's one of the big things. Right? We used to talk about mini-mester when I first came here. I was kind of like, oh, we're taking a week off and we're doing mission trips. And it's like, you know, watch what it does to our kids when they come back. Mm -hmm. And I did. I saw it. And I was just like, oh, my goodness, we need to make sure we keep on doing this forever. Because it's not about taking the gospel out as much as it is about grounding the gospel in the hearts of our kids mm-hmm. when they come back mm-hmm. 
and it really does change them. So incredible opportunity. You know, we'll say, Dan, I, I've been blessed to go on several international missionary trips mm -hmm. and been to the Amazon, been to Africa several times, and, and those who have been there know what I'm about to say. They are some of the absolute poorest people you will ever see, yeah. yet they are some of the most joyful right, people yeah. you will ever see. They don't have iPhones. They don't have cars, but they're just happy people, yeah. mm -hmm. and they are so thankful that you're there mm -hmm. to to tell them the word, especially if you bring some, you know, you bring some stuff with you. They're just so grateful. And it's so different really than, than what we, the culture we live in. Yeah. And you don't need to travel international to see that, but I'm just saying, it's just, it's really incredible. So yeah. I'm, I'm super excited for our high school students to get to go do that. And you know, Dan, I think what builds that love and that gratitude for the stuff around us is to be opening your, the word. Every time you open the word, we should come out there and go, wow. I mean, this is so awesome. God is so good. And we're fo when we're focused on the world and the stuff of this world, we're so caught up on other stuff rather than on the goodness of God. And so just opening up your word, I mean, what is it that's so good about God? And then being able to go and share, hey, guys, God showed me the coolest thing today about his character. And oh my goodness, I'm praying for you this, this today. I hope your eyes are open to that. That, you know, in giving them those opportunities, seeing that I, I struggle with anxiety. That's mm -hmm. everyone knows that I, I, that's a struggle. And I love that picture that gratitude and anxiety can't be together. So I've learned to do this practice of putting the letters A to Z and I put it in a journal and I begin to put list the character traits of God mm -hmm. and the characteristics. And then it begins to slow down my anxious thoughts. It's mm -hmm. off of what my creative imaginative self is coming up with the anxiety and it slows it down back to the character of God. And it's not Trisha focused, it's God focused in your being able to remember and to do that. And I just think a lot of the verses and that we um, talk about Thanksgiving is, you know, rejoice. And I love the word re is joy again and again, count it, count it, recount it. You know, we're good about recounting the bad stuff. Can you believe this happened? This was so unfair, you know? And especially if you've got middle school kids, uh, you know, or some girls or even guys. But well, and, and as moms, you don't know how bad today was. But we got to reframe it. And I think it's the idea of being able to see those things and being reminded, oh, my goodness, this is such a good, good God that loves us. And so it reminds us to slow down of the, trying to cr be creative and be able to focus on the character of God and that gives us a gratitude yeah that's good I think um, I can't remember who said it they said if uh, if the stars um, only came out one night a year right we'd stop everything for that one night we'd all go outside and we'd all look up at the stars because we'd appreciate them and we'd be like wow look at the stars but because they're there every night mm. We never take the time to stop and like really appreciate that. Right. I think that's a reminder of what we're trying to say is there's, there's no magic pill to create an attitude of gratitude in your heart or in your kids, but it's got to be this daily discipline of really helping, you know, not just changing your heart, but showing your kids what it looks like to be thankful uh, and to appreciate what God has blessed you with and really to just appreciate God right? who he is and his presence in your life. And so whether it's a good day or whether it's a bad day, Right? God is there in the midst of that day. Yeah. And, and how do you develop that appreciation for him, right? That, that he's your sufficiency. He's your all in all. So any last words for the parents during the week of Thanksgiving for them to focus on or, or to appreciate? Just for me, a couple of things. One is, uh, and Amy wanted me to mention this, for, for parents out there that are maybe listening to this that have little kids. Mm -hmm. Let's say, I can't go to Grace Bridge. I can't go yeah, downtown. Yeah. I can't go, you know, go in your playroom. Right, we all have probably more toys, thanks to Grandma mm -hmm. and Grandpa, yeah. who always buy too much. Uh, we used to do that when our kids were little. We used to go in our playroom and just say, "Okay, pick out three things awesome. that we can give mm -hmm. away." Mm -hmm. And and our kids, Good. they Practical. loved it. They yep. they didn't get it at first, but then it got to the point, kind of like Operation Christmas Child. They loved it. Like yeah. now, my my especially my girls, they love going shopping for Operation Christmas Child. They love yeah. buying stuff for other people, and it just warms our hearts, you know, yeah. to see that. And I guess the last thing I would say is I heard this on a podcast, a Christian podcast the other day, Dan, I thought of this. Um, I was listening to this pastor, and I thought this was so true about gratitude. He said, the only thing you're going to take with you to heaven someday are the things you gave away mm. in your lifetime. Mm, that's good. So you let that sink in, yeah. you know. First it's your life, and then hopefully it's your time and, 
That's your money awesome. and yeah. you know just everything. Yeah. Only that which you give away, you'll send take them. With send you. them on ahead. Right, they'll be there waiting for you when you get there. Yeah. <laughs> so. so whatever you hold on to down here, it won't be there. Right. That's awesome. Exactly. Very good, Cherry. Any words to? Moms and dads out there, just with kids and what this week looks like. Yeah, just be thankful for your family mm. and, and especially the kids. You know, um, I talk to so many moms and wannabe moms who are just experiencing the heartache of um, infertility mm. or mm-hmm. child loss. And it just makes me so thankful mm-hmm. just to have my kids all around me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a good reminder. Very good reminder. Trish? Well, I have a whole list. (laughs) I've got four pages. But now I think, again, I think the gratitude starts with us. And I think how we frame things, how you look at things. Um, Our kids are older. um, And so I think the older they get, um, we can begin to get set in ways. um, So and so, because I think the older they get, the easier we just slide into things. Anyway, I just think we need to be able to start it with us, giving them the attitude of gratitude, being able to to be grateful for what we have. We get to frame the joy. We get to show the enthusiasm of the love, of the love of people, God's favorite creation, us, and to be able to care for and take care of and to see and to use our words to build up to you know and just give our kids awareness of what's around us and then count it over and over again so so important from a parenting perspective that we model this for our kids Mm -hmm. you know dan one last thing can i say this i'm sorry i jumped in jump in but stones of remembrance i think that's the thing count it all joy we're recounting we're being reminded of the faithfulness of god in our life and dan had a a person on his one of his podcasts that talked about they have their stones of remembrance Mm -hmm. they started a shelf and so anytime god did something big for their family they went and found an item that represented that Mm -hmm. and so they have a shelf that they're a physical you know it could be a car it could be you know you know parker's seizures were healed and so getting an item and so they go there and those are reminders of god's faithfulness so when it's lonely when it's hard in you're in that struggle time this is the opportunity to dig into god's word because there is hope there is joy and there is peace yeah. and that's where thanksgiving and, and comes. psalm 78 talks about how we have to pass on from one generation to the next the, the works that god has done and i think you know mm. thanksgiving might be a great time to to think about why are we thankful what has god done in your family yeah. right and, i mean and from a parenting standpoint we look at our kids and we were just we're th- so thankful right i mean every child that's born is a, is a, an incredible miracle Right, so we just need to sit there and thank the Lord, right, for our family, um, for the blessings that He's given us, and and you know, little. I, I think you know this is a big thing for me because they're Ebenezer stones, right? They're, they're physical reminders of spiritual truths, and we need those, right? We need those little things that we walk by that remind us from a physical standpoint of what God has done, and so maybe this is a family tradition that you want to start and say, hey, during the week of Thanksgiving, right, we grab something every year as a little trinket to remind us of God's faithfulness for this particular year or because he did this we're going to be reminded of that right so just great great things for our families to to think through right so i appreciate you guys coming and and sharing a little bit about just you know your families and your journeys and your walks and how you are modeling thankfulness for your kids and what that looks like so we are thankful for you guys and uh, just from a school standpoint to have you and your kids here uh, at pca so thanks for your time Thank thank you it's been fun Thank you for investing the time to listen to this episode of The Journey. Please take a minute to share with friends and family who will also benefit from this valuable resource. And don't forget to rate and review this podcast on your favorite podcast app. It is truly our blessing and honor to walk with you on The Journey.